the festive season is here and I'm going to be leaving for home soon. While I'm there, I won't be able to film at all. So I need to get a lot of work done before I leave. My plan for tonight is to get some deep work done without any interruptions. If you don't already know, deep work is a concept described in the book by Cal Newport. Deep work emphasizes the importance of focused and uninterrupted work that helps in achieving high levels of productivity and creative output. So tonight is going to be a cozy front-end marathon so that I can get as much work done as possible while also filming content. The first thing that I want to do tonight is to work on the Benthofolio project that I created in the last video. I don't think I will be able to finish it but I want it to be in a state where it's usable for other people. So tonight I just added another grid for work experience. I've kept the grid sections empty for both work experience and projects because you're supposed to fill these sections with your own details. I also added some instructions inside of the readme file about how to get started with this project and what are the relevant files that you might be looking for in case you want to customize this template. The second thing that I want to do tonight is again hitting two birds with one stone. Previously I've talked about how I want to become a creative developer. So I've been learning new HTML, CSS and JavaScript tricks. Last night I sat down and browsed two different creative websites and created a list of 10 different effects that I wanted to learn. So in tonight's coding session, I not only want to implement these different effects, I'm also planning to create mini tutorials for them for Instagram. So without wasting any more time, let's just jump right into the coding. The first thing that I'm starting with tonight is the 3D web design trend that I have been seeing everywhere. I really wanted to try it out and I also bought a couple of courses about the same. Tonight I am just experimenting with what's possible and getting myself acquainted with the different tools and software available to you for 3D web design. Next, I am trying out some text animations. In my opinion, adding text animations add a little bit more life to your websites. The first one is this text reveal effect that I have seen in so many different websites. The second one is this hover effect that you can use with hyperlinks. Next is this confetti style mouse over effect that I have seen on Canva previously and more recently I have spotted this one on Ugao's website as well. I'm wrapping up tonight's coding session with one last text effect that mimics the subtitles on a video or mimics the text on a teleprompter. So this is basically how it works. The opacity of the words inside of this text changes as you are scrolling through the page.
If you are also interested in learning about these web design tricks, then you can follow me on Instagram because I'm going to be posting mini tutorials on these topics on there. Or else you can find the links to the code snippets of the tricks that I shared in the description box below. I'm not using any frameworks for implementing these. I have just used HTML, CSS and pure JavaScript. On my last video, I received this comment about how I learn new things specifically related to web design. So I just wanted to sit down here and share a little bit about my process. I am someone who invests in courses, not because I think that that piece of knowledge is not available online for free, but because I am on a limited time here. I cannot spend my time trying to figure out what to learn. So it's best if I'm able to find a resource that just clubs together all of the topics at one place so that I can get started as quickly as possible. For learning creative front-end web development, I have recently shortlisted a few courses on awards.com and I have purchased a few and I'm going to be watching these one by one over the next couple of months. Another habit that I have is when I find something that I like, if something catches my eye in a certain website, I try to replicate it myself. I try to become a good observer and then deconstruct what I'm trying to create and then start implementing it. For example, if I'm looking at an animation, I try to look at the different stages of the animation and try to think about how I can implement each stage. If I get stuck at a certain point, obviously I refer to ChatGPT and try to ask questions. Sometimes I also just ask ChatGPT to implement something for me. A lot of the times it does not give me the solution for what I am looking for exactly, but it gives me something close enough or at least something that I can work upon. If I'm still stuck at something I try to do a Google search and the beauty of the internet is that the problem that I have faced someone else has probably faced it before so 99% of the time I am able to find let's say an article or a tutorial talking about what I am looking for I think the best way to learn new skills is to get your hands dirty with it no amount of reading or watching tutorials or just learning something can replace the action of actually practicing those skills you also have to accept the fact that initial you're going to be terrible at that thing but over time you're going to make progress and you will soon reach a stage where you are comfortable sharing your work with others. Because of this YouTube channel, I'm able to document my journey of learning new things and create new projects just for the fun of it, not because I want to apply for a job, not because I want to crack an interview, but just to experience the joy of creating things. That is all for this video. I have so many new ideas that I want to implement in my future videos. So I'll see you guys in the next one.